Welcome to Gross Anatomy. Welcome to uh, Gross Anatomy. Welcome. You got your hair straightened. No. <laughs> it looks straightened. I just brushed it. Oh, okay, good. Very nice. So welcome to Gross Anatomy, where we discuss the sights, smells, and sounds. I said Gross Anatomy. Gross Anatomy, where we discuss, disc, discuss. We discuss <laughs> the sights, smells, and sounds of medicine and how it relates to movies, pop culture, TV, and everything around us. That's right. Yeah, and I'm Dr. Jason Cohen. And I'm Lauren Taylor. And together we're Dr. Jason Cohen and Lauren Taylor. <laughs> That's right. And welcome. 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 Are we live? We're live and nice. we have a question. You got oh, right. a kind of funny question. I didn't do any research on it. I did a little bit. You did? What's but the question? You, give your you give the answer then, okay. Dr. Lauren Taylor. <laughs> Not a Dr. Lauren Taylor. What's the question? The question was, if I were to hypothetically eat craft singles for the rest of my life, what would happen? Now, first question I have to that question. Do you think someone's just being silly or someone's being serious or serious silly or just having fun with us? What do you think? I think all of those things, but I think this person probably has an affinity for craft singles. It's basically like eating plastic. Cheese that doesn't go bad. It's not, it's plastic. It's like eating plastic. Yes. Right. And actually, by the FDA standards, craft isn't permitted to refer to singles as cheese. Really? Because the word indicates that a product is made with at least 51% cheese. So hmm. I guess craft singles are not. Wow. That's why so the label... So it's not even called cheese no, anymore. No, the label reads pasteurized prepared cheese product. Cheese product. Right. Mm. So, I guess in general, uh, dietitians, nutritionists say that typically the fewer ingredients a food contains, the healthier that food tends to be. Just like an avocado is just not avocado. Kale, almonds, just like all healthy for you, raw food. Um, that's all that's in an avocado is an avocado, obviously. So, and a pit. Right. Uh -huh. And comparatively, the ingredient list for a slice of Kraft American cheese has 17 ingredients. Ah. Uh. So, I guess basic rule of thumb is the less ingredients, the better it probably is for you. The less chemicals, the less processed The worse food, it is. The worse uh, it uh, is. Uh, yeah. The more ingredients, the worse it is. Right. Right. So, what would happen if you ate that every day? That I don't know. Probably nothing. Probably if, nothing. Right. I, but, did, did the person say if that's the only thing they ate every day, like tons of Kraft cheese, or just if they had a slice every day? Just if they had a slice every day. So, probably nothing. Probably nothing. Definitely nothing. But, um... But in general, yeah, it's not... So it doesn't have as much calcium. It's just a cheese. Something that's actually labeled cheese. Right. Although, getting into my weird... My weirdness that I've become over the years in terms of... Have we talked much about my evolution to being a plant-based guy? Have we discussed that much? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on a whole, I think it's better to avoid um, animal protein. So that they're... Definitely have some animal protein in that, in addition to all the other crap. Right. Terrible. Uh, so, okay. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about the Hulu documentary, Ask Dr. Ruth. Ask Dr. Ruth. Which is goes over Dr. Ruth's life. and Who's Dr. Ruth? Dr. Ruth Westheimer is... Um, not the other Ruth who you thought. Not, right. You looked I up the wrong, wrong Dr. Ruth. I got it wrong yeah. before. Mm -hmm. This Dr. Ruth, um, she's a famous sex therapist. Famous, and she's this adorable 90, is she 90? She's 90. 90 year old Jewish German grandmother who's like four foot nothing. She's totally amazing. Yeah. She's tiny. But the funny thing is, you didn't really know who she was, but I remember growing up as a kid and and hearing about her, and, and sometimes my friends and I would listen in to her program that was on it, you know, they show in the documentary, it was on at night initially, thinking how funny it is to see the, to listen to and hear this old, late, old Jewish grandma, and she's still going, which blew, blows still my mind. She's going, so fast. Too. Yeah, she's unbelievable, the amount of energy, and she's really lived a pretty insane life. She has, um... Yeah, one of her nicknames is she's four foot seven. They call her the Happy Munchkin of Sex. Interesting. Which I thought was a funny nickname that came up during the documentary. I don't remember that. That came up in the documentary. Yeah, but she has lived an interesting life. So she calls herself a Holocaust orphan, right? Not a Holocaust survivor, even right. though both would apply. Right. But and she said that because she wasn't necessarily in a camp. She was on the Kinder transport. Right. She was sent to Switzerland to live in an orphanage. Yeah, and her parents both died. Right. In concentration camps. Right. Which she didn't find out till later. I right. mean, the letters just stopped coming after, like, a yeah. few years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the one thing I didn't love about the documentary was 
Um, the I, although I'm not sure the animation stuff that they showed, you know, depicting her childhood. Yeah, I guess they didn't know how to do it. Um, yeah. What I thought was effective, and what I wish they would have just gone more into, was when she actually went to go visit her boyfriend that grew up in the same orphanage. Right. And I thought that was amazing. Who was she, also 90. Yeah. Right. And he was, um, they were like each other's like first loves. They didn't do anything but kiss, but. Or so she says. Or so she says. Right. But the interesting thing was, I guess she only got to go to school till, she went to this camp when she was 10. And yeah. she only got to go to school till she was in eighth grade. Yeah. And then the boys got to go to school for longer. That was interesting. So he would come back from school and hide under her bed and let her read the books like in the hall light like all the books that he was yeah. reading because he I mean she was always an intellectual always craving to learn more so I thought that part was interesting yeah and the and reason she's in the news now is a they made this documentary about her um but also which, which is just amazing to hear mm -hmm. um what do you think about the doc documentary I thought it was good I just wish it was a little bit more informative as far as like what what it takes to become a sex therapist and right. what a sex therapist like does day to day but i guess she's not a typical example because right. she's kind of like a she's the hollywood version right she's like she was like the first right. like reality star to some degree or one of the first reality stars well they stars. did mention that like she people had problems <clears throat> uh, pronouncing her last name so she just started going by dr ruth and right. then it showed like People that, like, copied her, like, Dr. Phil, Dr. Right. Oz, like, everyone just, like, started doing the one name. Yeah. And, um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, oh, and the other reason why she's kind of in the news now is uh, because she was recently on The Ellen Show, which is what prompted me to to remember about right. Dr. Ruth. Um, and, and she's still talking about sex, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to hear more about her, the, the difficulty she had doing the whole, they, they touched upon it a little bit, but the difficulty she had in terms of being a sex therapist. It sounds like she had, I mean, I guess they touched upon it a little bit, but it sounds like she just kept meeting success almost, right? Yeah, and said that she And maybe that was the case. Maybe she just kept being in the right place after all her horrible stuff. She kept being, being in the right, right place. place. Yeah, I guess she knew she wanted to be a sex therapist after working at Planned Parenthood. That was just like Which is amazing. something she, yeah. Right. And something she's still passionate about. Right. Because, uh, and that's that's the elephant in the room. Um, but what is the elephant in the room? Uh, I don't know. Oh. I don't know where you're going no, oh, you don't? No, the whole um, oh, abortion, abortion thing. Uh, cause and you and I are wrestling with whether some, or not we should talk yeah, about it on, on in our podcast. Planned Parenthood support abortion, right. but a Planned Because we don't want to be political. We're we apolitical. We political, but just, I think people, people think that <clears throat> now they associate Planned Parenthood with just, like, abortion. Right. But it's so much more than that. It's so, a place where women who usually can't afford it can go for care, for to see a gynecologist. I can't say gynecologist. Gynecological? Say, yes, that's there what I'm trying go. to say. There you go. No, that's Exams. a mouthful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think she even talked about it on the Ellen show and she, it was cute in the, that was one of the things that was kind of cute in the documentary that she would, she shows that she's pro choice, pro abortion. Um, but then when she, people would try to engage her to discuss politics, she, she would be adorable. You know, yeah. she was amazing. She'd be like, no, 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 no. But just getting into abortion a little bit is, it's a shame that it's a political issue. It really shouldn't be. Well, I, I guess that's her point. So she's right. not going right. to go down that road. Right, and that it shouldn't be. But so she worked with another sex therapist that um, was a founder of the first clinic in the United States for sexual disorders. And I would l have liked to hear more about this. Oh, wow. Thing or yeah. And, like, and that that kind of work. Yeah, I was hoping was cool they would stuff. go in a little bit more of like how s sex therapy can like maybe, you know, cure people or get them not depressed. Right. Did you ever see... Um, what was that? H was it HBO or Showtime? Was it Masters of Sex? I didn't see it. Oh, you did. Uh, it was a. It was about Masters and Johnson, the doctor who did a lot of sex research yeah. too. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I just never saw it. Was it was pretty good, and and it was kind of interesting about early sex therapy work too, which which is it was a pretty fascinating show. I think I watched so a maybe, season and a half of yeah, it. Maybe yeah, maybe I just need to see that. But it, I mean. Obviously, she's Dr. Ruth is ninety, and she's still doing so much. So it, the documentary is interesting. Right. It's just in delve into like as much right. about really the actual sex therapy. What was amazing was how 
people called in and said how much she helped them. You know, yeah. she saved the lives of people and stuff. I thought that was Men, amazing, Men, women, Apparently straight, she gets that gays. all the time. Yeah. yeah. I, like, when she was doing our show, apparently, you know, like, uh, she was telling gay people, it's okay, I mean, it's it's okay to be gay. It's normal to have these feelings. Right. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Or right. there's nothing wrong with man-on-man sex. There's, I mean, it was the first time, like, a lot of younger people were hearing this. Yeah. And that is actually on the radio show that they followed her to this radio show. And the, I don't know his name, but the guy doing the radio program said that. He was like, you, you know, you saved me. Like, right, right. And as a gay amazing. male, you, yeah. like, gave me hope. Yeah. And it was funny how she would go on the, you know, the big time talk shows and make the talk show hosts, you know, say penis or vagina <laughs> or, you know, like Arsenio Hall. She definitely or, knew how to get attention. Was, yeah. like, great at marketing yourself without even trying. And yet she would do it with the cutest smile, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it was so not threatening and so and it kind of calmed you down and relaxed you she yeah i gotta tell you it must be must have been interesting being a child and or a grandchild of her oh yeah it has to be fascinating um like i wanted to see more about them didn't you they showed the family a little bit i wanted to see more i thought they showed them enough you did (laughs) i wanted to see more I wanted to see more, like, if there was, like, more outrage. Like, it said, like, during the right. early 80s when she was, like, becoming popular, people just didn't talk about women, like, having sex. Right. Or orgasms. Right. That was the big one. And apparently when she was in Oklahoma... You didn't even say it. Orgasm. There you go. So apparently when she was in Oklahoma, of course, a shout out to my home state, um, she was at the Oklahoma State University, and someone did attempt to, like do a citizen's arrest oh, right, on her. Right, right, right. And then yeah. she, like, she had to, like, leave the stage because someone was going crazy and I was like, oh, of course that happened in Oklahoma. Of course. But I, I was wondering if there was, like, more of that and, like, what she had to go through. But right. I don't know. Maybe that'll be part two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, she's lived a great life. There she could really definitely has. be another documentary. I know. For sure there could have been a part one and a part two. Like, part one, more about her early stuff and then part two. But it was interesting, too, that she talked about relationships as well and about getting out of relationships, right? Do you remember that, too, that when they're not She's okay? She's married and she was, three times. Which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty remarkable woman. Now, there was an interview with her in which she was asked, um, are there questions you've gotten over the years to which your answers changed? Ah. And she said, I don't think so, but I'll tell you what has changed. I get more questions about people who, in a relationship, may be always looking to see if there's something better. Hmm. And she kind of blames that on this romantic kind of love that doesn't really... It only exists in celebrity culture or the movies. So, I don't know. So, I guess that's what she... People are looking for things better. Maybe it has to do with all the dating apps. I don't know. Right. Or just everything's so much more exposure in the world. Everything's out there in the world. Yeah. Well, we've talked about that, too. You know, uh, that on the one hand, I think my kids have it so easy. But on the other hand, I think my kids have it so much harder because it's just like sensory overload and Mm -hmm. and you know there's no mystery anymore to some degree and and there's so much pressure to look a certain way you know when we talked about um the whole instagram thing and and looking you know and and faking so i don't know yeah nobody knows nobody knows nobody knows today was our first day of our uh pre-med program uh, that I run, uh, or or it was the first day when we met with our all of our students and our guest uh, speaker, which was um, exciting. We had an anesthesiologist come and talk about, um, she does, uh, in addition to doing anesthesia, she does all these medical missions. Uh, so it was cool to hear about her talking about her, her mission, you know, medical mission work. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. We should have her on the show. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. And there you go. There you go. Thanks for joining us Thank at you. Gross Anatomy Podcast. I hope this one this one was kind of short and sweet. It's short and sweet. Short and sweet. Don't forget to find us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. What's our Instagram? Gross Anatomy Podcast. Find us on Instagram and do all that good stuff. And like us and you, you, everything. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening to Gross Anatomy. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can check out more episodes on the evolving sights, smells, and sounds of medicine.